And another news, uh, Fox News alert, ISIS for the first time has launched an attack from Turkey, according to a Kurdish spokesman. Kurds fighting to save the Syrian border town of Kobani from the Islamic militants say ISIS began the new offensive with an armored vehicle suicide attack on the Turkish side of the border. Fox News has not been able to confirm that report, and the Turkish government is denying the attack came from their side of the border. But all this comes just days after Chuck Hagel resigned as U.S. Secretary of Defense, leading many to wonder what our military strategy in that region will be going forward. And joining us now, General Jack King, Fox News military analyst and retired four-star general. General, thanks very much for coming in. First, I want to get your reaction to this attack, allegedly, by ISIS from north of the border, from Turkey. What do you make of it? If well, it certainly is possible. The fact is we've been at a stalemate in Kobani ever since we were able to put some effective airstrikes in there. And, and I think ISIS, if this is true, is, is obviously trying to change that, gain some momentum, and take control of that town. Whether they, the Turks, listen, they've been playing games with us for some time. They have not shut down the ISIS fighters that are moving into Turkey and then into Syria. And they've been playing games with us about the veracity of, of all of that. So this suggests in some manner that uh, ISIS is metastasizing throughout the region beyond what we knew it to be? Well, in terms of control and dominance, it is what we see, and that's Syria and Iraq. In terms of influence outside of it, they certainly do have some in North Africa and in other parts of the region. They, they've become the new face of al-Qaeda, and many people are gravitating towards them with more allegiance because they see this as the wave of the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, ISIS on its uh, Twitter feed and, and in several internet postings has been bragging about the demise of uh, Chuck Hagel, taking credit for it in part. What do you make of that? Nah. Well, I, I think it, it is part of it in the sense that the fact of the matter is Secretary Hagel had disagreements with this administration over a number of things. One, arming the Ukrainians. Two, more effectiveness on the ground, more boots on the ground in Iraq, and three, on Syria, he wanted to have a strategy to deal with Assad and not just put Assad aside and just deal with ISIS. The fact of the matter is you have to deal with both of them at the same time. Most of us believe that. Hegel believed that. And then he also had a squabble over quarantining our troops coming back from Ebola. He supported the generals in doing that. I think when he was selected, he was very much Obama's man, the so-called indispensable man disagreed with the war in Iraq, was going to end the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, and was going to cut the defense budget. But he became more and more aligned with the generals who he believed their judgment was correct. And in so doing, uh, his resignation has made supporters out of some people who were opposed to his nomination, Senator John McCain among them. And McCain recently said uh, in, a, in a radio interview, and I'm quoting here, I, I thank Chuck Hagel for his service, and I know that he was very, very frustrated. Already, the White House people are leaking, well, he wasn't up to the job. Well, believe me, he was up to the job. It was the job he was given where he really was never really brought into that real tight circle inside the White House that makes all the decisions, which has put us into the incredible debacle that we're in today throughout the world. Your reaction? Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of truth to that. He's the third Secretary of Defense that has expressed the same level of frustration, and it deals with a White House that's meddling in their affairs. In other words, in the things that they normally have responsibility and accountability for, the White House is involved in that. Also, all the decision making takes place in their functional area away from them. They're not part of the decision making process. I think that the cumulative effect of that, Doug, when you have these kind of responsibilities and the accountability that goes with it, leads to huge frustration. And the interesting thing to me about this, in part, is that these are really, really credible folks who, who left in, in, uh, in, in advance of him. Uh, Leon Panetta, Bob Gates before that. What kind of a signal does that send to the, some of the bad actors on the world stage, the Putins of the world, or the, the president of the Chinese? Well, I think they mostly look at our capabilities more than anything else. Certainly they do know the major thing that has happened in the last five or six years is the United States, from a policy perspective, has disengaged from the world. They all know that. I don't think it matters to them much who is the Secretary of Defense. They are taking advantage of the major decision that the President has made, and that is to change the role of the United States as it pertains to the world out there and pull back from it. They are advantaging themselves because of that. General Jack, I always appreciate your yeah. expertise. Well, Thank you. you Doug. Dozens of ISIL terrorists have been reportedly killed in renewed fighting with Kurdish defenders of the northern Syrian city of Kobani. A UK-based Syrian opposition group says that at least 50 ISIL militants died in clashes with Kurdish forces and in U.S.-led airstrikes. 
the deaths happened over the past 24 hours. According to the monitoring group, the number of fatalities is one of the highest that the terror group has suffered since it launched its offensive against Kobani in September. British forces engaged in intense, renewed fighting with the terrorists on Saturday. A Peshmerga commander says the Kurdish defenders are advancing and the ISIL members are on the retreat. So how about this? Members of a massive Dutch biker gang doing what no country has been willing to do so far in the fight against ISIS. The leader of No Surrender announcing today that three of its members have traveled to Mosul in northern Iraq to fight with the Kurds, on the long side the Kurds, after a Dutch prosecutor gave the green light for its citizens to fight against the terror group. Members of the Dutch motorcycle gang No Surrender have joined Kurdish forces to fight against the Islamic State in northern Iraq. Dutch gang member Ron, who did not give his last name, is fighting with the Peshmerga forces on the front lines of the city of Zumar, close to the Syrian border. The Kurden die worden al heel lang uh, uh, onderdrukt, en uh, op het moment dat er nog Yazidis uh, vermoord worden en de manier hoe, dan kan je niet thuis op de bank blijven zitten. Ron says he came to the Iraqi region with a large group of people from his homeland. He also says he has a military background and experience with fighting. Hoe lang ik hier ben, dat is niet echt belangrijk, maar ik blijf al tot de Aish terug in Syrië is en van Koerdisch grondgebied. Another twist in the fight against ISIS. There are actually a few American boots on the ground, although the U.S. military did not put them there. Brian Wilson, a man from Ohio, went voluntarily to fight alongside the Kurds. Well, most people in America are, are against Daesh, of course, the Islamic State. And there are a few Americans that wanted to come here and, and help the YPG any, in any way we can. Armed men are a common sight here in Kurdish-controlled northern Syria, a country embroiled in a vicious civil war. But one of the gunmen in this truck is not like the others. So how do people react to you when, uh, when they see you and realize you're from the U.S.? They ask me if I'll come over for dinner and stay the night at their house. Jordan Matson is a 28-year-old former U.S. Army soldier from Sturdivant, Wisconsin. How are you? How are you? I'm good. For the last month, he's also been a volunteer fighter in the Kurdish militia known here as the YPG. I got in contact with uh, the YPG on Facebook, and uh, I prayed about it for probably a month or two, and you know, just really soul searched and said, "Is this what I want to do?" And eventually, you know, decided to do it. During his two years in the army, Matson never once saw combat or deployment overseas. But soon after arriving here in Syria, he says he ended up in a battle against ISIS. The second day in, I got hit by a, a mortar in my, on a fight. While recovering from shrapnel wounds, Matson went to work online, recruiting more foreigners to help the YPG fight against ISIS. I've had an ex-military come from East, ask from Eastern Europe. Western Europe, Canada, the United States, Australia, um, you name it, they've been asking. You know, ISIS has threatened all of these countries that I've named to push their agenda in those nations, and the veterans of those nations who love their countries don't want to sit by while this is happening. U.S. law enforcement officials say it's illegal for an American to join a Syrian militia. But Matson says... Being here, fighting ISIS alongside the Kurds, is a dream come true. You could not be further from home right now. Yeah, I guess this is the other side of the world. All my life I just wanted to be a soldier, I guess growing up. and uh, So, this, I just fits well over here. I'm at peace being here. Figured if I came over here, more Americans, other people from different countries would come over here. Woodard left the U.S. military in 2012 after serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. But a month ago, after he was angered by news reports about atrocities committed by ISIS, he paid his own way to Turkey and was then smuggled into the war zone. Can't really understand them, but sign language is everything. So, but great guys. 
Woodard told us he's been involved in several battles against ISIS, including one not far from this area on Syria's border with Iraq that he said raged for 24 hours. Have you killed anyone since you've been here? I've killed two uh, in my first battle in Jezza. Um, that's it so far. Hopefully my numbers will go up. Uh, never thought I'd be over in Syria killing people, but they've killed innocent people. If you're captured by ISIS, there's a good chance you'll be executed, you'll be beheaded. Is that frightening? It's not frightening to me. Um, if I have one bullet left, I'll take my own life before that happens. Uh, I'm not going to get put on YouTube by ISIS and let them put me on my knees and cut my head off for publicity. <laughs> now they seem to be targeted often much larger blasts than we've seen previously uh, but they appear to be being used to keep isis back from advancing to uh, remove parts of their armor parts of the things which is hard for those fighting on the ground Oh, my God. 